In mid-May, after I finished my exams, I went on a road trip around Ireland. I decided that after spending a year in this country that is so rich in history, landscapes, and monuments, I was really doing myself a disservice by not exploring it all. As you know, I am a huge fan of literature. I mean, I just created this booktube channel. So I decided that the best way to fully immerse myself in Irish culture was to read some Irish novels while on this road trip. The first book that I read was The Rachel Incident by Caroline O'Donoghue. It takes place around Cork City, and that is where I live most of the year now. And because of that, it was also the first area that I explored. I went to Cove, I went to the Blarney Castle, and it was so magical. The Rachel Incident itself was honestly the perfect novel to start this entire journey with. It's a very funny novel. We follow Rachel as she learns that her previous English professor, Dr. Burns, is now in a coma. And that causes her to start reminiscing and recounting her early 20s in Quark City and her relationship with this teacher as well as with her best friend James. Perhaps I'm slightly biased towards this book because all the places that are name dropped in here, I've been there. There is this one instance of the author saying that there are like three decent clubs or something like that in this book. And so you bet that when I was reading it, I was noticing which clubs she is mentioning so that I would know something more about the author, you know, and what places she prefers. And she mentions the Brogue, which, you know, famously Killian Murphy tends to go there sometimes. And after the scene in the Brogue, there is also this description of uh, people in the street uh, called Oliver Plunkett Street eating takeout. And I was like, I know exactly what they're getting. I know exactly what this looks like because I'm one of those people. I don't often read books that take place in the same area that I live or that I'm visiting and so it was just very special to me to read this book. It truly is such a great time. Is it deep? No. <laughs> it's like watching a soap opera or like a train crash that you just can't stop watching because you're like oh my god what is going on and it's all surrounding this mystery of what is the relationship between all these different characters now. The plot twists in this we're wild. <laughs> and this mystery is tied together so nicely by this very bittersweet ending that somehow is so fitting. I read it in two days and it was such a delight to start off my road trip with. The next book that I read, I really had high expectations because it won the Booker Prize last year and it's called Prophet Song by Paul Lynch. Unfortunately, all the good time that I thought I was making with the Rachel incident, I lost because of this book and it derailed everything. When I tell you it took me days to read the first hundred pages and I hated it. I, okay, I have this pet peeve where authors just ignore basic grammar. This author decided to write in blocks of text without proper punctuation, dialogue indicators, and no paragraph breaks. The only breaks that we do see in this book are ones that indicate passage of time. When I say there were moments during the road trip that I would have rather like clawed my eyes out than picked this book up. But then something changed. <laughs> when I was just over the 100 page mark, I posted this book on my Instagram and one subscriber called Lex messaged me about this book and we had a very good conversation. So thank you so much to Lex for changing my perspective on this book. What it truly comes down to is this book is marketed very poorly. We're told that it's supposed to be the story of how Dublin is being plunged into chaos as it turns to this authoritative government and we follow the story of Eilish who is the mother of this family as she tries to keep everything together. On the surface, sure that is kind of what it's about, but what Lex kind of told me was forget about literally everything other than Eilish because the country, what is happening in the country, does not matter. The only thing that matters is Eilish and her mental state and her relationship to her kids. Once he told me that, I got so much more enjoyment out of the book because my frustrations kind of started to go away. As you know, I read a bunch of classic dystopians last month. And so going into this one, I truly thought that there would be more about the government, about why Ireland is suddenly becoming so authoritarian, but that's not explored at all. And she, as a character in this world that's happening, she would have some political background information about what is happening. But we as the reader, even though we're supposed to be in her head, we don't have any of that information. So there's this disconnect and it's just very frustrated. And because her sons and her husband get so involved, 
don't you think that we should have some inkling of why they are getting involved and why why they are so passionate about it? A reason that's better than authoritarian government's bad? Because that's just super generic. There's one scene in this entire book that, sure, it's one of the best things I've ever read. It's at the end of chapter eight, if anyone is curious. But other than that one scene and some very quotable lines, I do not understand how it won the Booker Prize. Overall, huge disappointment. After finishing Prophet Song, I decided it was time to round out my Sally Rooney reading and read Beautiful World, Where Are You? This book is so gorgeous. It's about conflict, it's about love, and how necessary conflict is to love. When starting it, I was quite nervous because my big problem with normal people, which I think is quite overrated, was the fact that we were split between Connell and uh, Marianne, and we just didn't have as much depth to either of those characters as we did with Francis in conversations with friends. And so going into this one and knowing that there were going to be four POV characters really made me nervous, but wow, I was really taken aback. We have these two pairings, one of which is Alice and Felix, and the other one is Simon and Eileen. I think that I preferred Simon and Eileen together more, but Alice was my favorite character overall. Man, I love Sally Rooney's writing. She's so concise, but she knows exactly the most important thing to say. For example, in the first Alice chapter, when she meets Felix, there's this description of Felix taking a drink with a practice move or something like that, and that really foreshadows some of his struggles later on in the book. The real standout here was definitely the friendship between Alice and Eileen. I don't know how Sally Rooney does it, but she has this way of capturing female friendships that I really haven't read any other author manage to do. She isn't afraid to tackle their ugliness, but she's also able to convey the beauty of them. And the thing that truly elevated this book for me so much were the emails between Alice and Eileen. They discuss so many things. Some are confrontational, some are hopeful, some discuss politics and history, some just are about the two of them and the struggles of their everyday life. And there's so much reflection here. And man, I, I loved, loved, loved the emails. Here's a quote that really resonated with me. The truth is that I really love Lola and my mother, and I think that they love me, although we can't seem to get along with one another, and maybe we never will. In a funny way, maybe it's not important to get along and more important just to love each other anyway. And I just think that's a gorgeous sentiment. I know someone is going to say that I'm a hypocrite because Sally Rooney famously doesn't use quotation marks, but here's the thing. She still uses normal grammar other than the quotation marks, so I'm able to kind of find myself and understand what's going on. She did go into the block of text later on in the book, which made a part of it much more difficult for me to read. Overall, I was still very happy with this novel, and it was very beautiful, like the title says. <laughs> Because of the delay that Prophet Song caused, I wasn't able to finish this last book in Ireland, so I finished it just recently when coming back to Poland, but it was The Beasting, and this was the other Booker Prize nominee, and in my opinion, it should have won, <laughs> at least from the two books that I did read. This is another one that's really difficult to describe. In a nutshell, we're following this family unit uh, after the 2008 market crash in Ireland in a fairly small town and how everyone in this family is affected. But truly its strength is in exploring perspective and how the same event can be truly viewed differently depending on in whose head you are. We start off by following the children and they really see their parents as these caricatures, but then a huge chunk of the book, we do follow the parents and then we think back to what we knew about them at the start and it really humanizes them. And it's so fascinating how Paul Murray is able to build this very layered narrative that at first appears to be so surface level. And these narratives add and add and add until they start spiraling towards the end of the book where we get all these different characters, almost like a play with the different character narratives uh, cutting into each other. It has a little bit to do with magical realism, which I think was sprinkled in like the perfect amount uh, because it was just used for foreshadowing, a little bit of character development, but it wasn't so present that it took away from the authenticity from of the story. And I'm very glad that I took my time when reading this book because I truly think that if you take the time to live with these characters, you will get so much out of it. The ending is very contentious, but I think it was the perfect ending to this book. 
Uh, I think it was brilliantly foreshadowed from the start. And when compared to Prophet Song, this book does the same thing. It also analyzes these perspectives of these characters, but guess what? It does it so much better and it does it for four characters, not one. So honestly, I don't know what the jury was thinking because this book was so much better than Prophet Song. Is it my favorite book of all time? No, but I think it's really solid. Thank you so much for watching till the end of the video. If you have any books by Irish authors that you think I should check out, do let me know in the comments and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye-bye.